The Tarot Decoded, Raziel's Interpretation, New Extended Edition by Grant Isaac. Chapter 22, Section 2, Taurus. Astrological house number two, Taurus is ruled by the planet Venus, which is associated with the seventh Sephira Netzach. Therefore, this path includes the cards associated with the number seven. And these cards in their respective order are the Seven of Wands, Seven of Cups, Seven of Swords and Seven of Pentacles, the Chariot and the Tower. Taurus is an earth sign that yearns for a stable life. They are ambitious, logical, trustworthy, practical, down to earth, organized and are full of determination. While on the other hand, they can be materialistic, lazy, headstrong, jealous, possessive, self-indulgent and greedy. In order for Taurus to grow spiritually, they need to avoid uh, being too comfortable to the point of becoming complacent. Being is how they have a connection to Netzach, meaning victory. Tauruses are naturally headstrong and given and driven to achieve their goals. They are not ones to easily give up. They are self-motivated, proving they can achieve greatness as they rightfully make their mark, as well as earn respect from their peers. In addition to what has been stated, stability for a Taurus is maintained after having first put forth the effort. In other words, they work hard so they can play hard. Ideally, the ultimate goal is to create a passive income stream where revenue flows into your account. Initially, you must put forth a significant amount of effort in the beginning before getting the income stream running, but eventually up, uh, end up having their money work for them. For example, a musician can record a single and then from that hit song is able to live comfortably off the royalties. This passive income concept can also be applied towards real estate, dividend stocks, as well as peer-to-peer -peer lending. Resist the urge to stay within the realm of comfort and predictability. The energy of Taurus may prompt us to shy away from new ideas, opportunities or people. But this is precisely the time to embrace change and discomfort in order to spark radical transformation. Dare to be uncomfortable. Break out of your box. Shake things up. Say no to complacency and yes to change. Seven of Wands. In the Seven of Wands card, a man is depicted wearing two different types of shoes, standing off balance as he tries to obtain some sort of stability on the uneven ground. This struggle to find balance adds to the frustration as he attempts to level out the row of wands set before him. Even though he is faced with a daunting situation, he remains focused on his goal and is driven to complete the task at hand, proving to be victorious in the end. The suit of wands relates to opinions and coincides with the personal knowledge one gains over a lifetime. Wands correspond to agriculture and this and and things that develop over time, such as ideal ideals, ethics and morals. A Taurus can be bullheaded and fixed in their opinion, believing their opinion is better than others. This strong belief is in their own opinion makes them even more so apt to convince others into believing it as well. Taurus feels that they are coming from the right place and are helping, but sometimes people are not mature enough or spiritually ready to change their ways or change their mind, even though the Taurus's new way of doing things proves to be more practical and will end up improving everybody's everyday life. This brings us to the interpret the hidden symbolism concealed within the card, revealing its relation to practical advice and will offer a solution for dealing with these types of situations. As stated earlier, the suit of wands is associated with agriculture due to the fact that they are trees. Likewise, the god of agriculture is Saturn, who is the lord of time. Thus, every time the card of suit of wands contains a certain aspect of time relating to either the present moment, a day or a year's time, depending on the card, the secret of determining the timing aspect of each wands card is to count the branches of the wands. For instance, there are exactly 20 branches on the Seven of Wands in the Seven of Wands card. The number 20 is significant because it is the gematria value of the Hebrew letter Kapf, which meaning palm of hand, open palm. What happens when we open our palm? We immediately let go of our grip. In this case, the man holding his large wand would instantly let go and release his big opinion. By letting go of one regains their sense of stability. You re-establish self-respect as soon as you realize your opinion and knowledge. It contains 
far too great for others to comprehend at the time. You do not allow yourself to stoop down to their level and once again rise above them. At this time, they are simply not ready, nor are they open to hear what you have to say. The Taurus would be wise up to simply let go and walk away, later to return to try again once the people were ready. Worth mentioning here is that this card is actually a portrayal of Moses coming down from Mount Sinai and the Ten Commandments, the new law, in his hands and attempting to share with them the Israelite nation. Although at the time this Jewish people were not spiritually ready to receive such powerful knowledge, nor yet open to change, Moses tried to convince them, but to no avail. Upon realising that the people were not ready, he broke the tablets upon the ground, metaphorically dropping his opinion and letting it go. Moses then returned back up the mountain to retrieve a new set of tablets and planned to return back to his people once they were spiritually ready to receive them. Moses remained on Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights, which Kabbalists consider to be the, sa the time needed for spiritual cleansing. The Hebrew letter Mem, meaning water, has a numerical value of 40, thus the number 40 associates with a healing aspect of water and also the time needed for such a cleanse. Although this time is relative, you will notice in the card how Moses' character is depicted standing on a cliff over the six of wands that are set in the water also known as the Sea of Emotions below. The wands here represent opinions significantly smaller than Moses's, symbolizing that they are not spiritually mature and still undergoing the cleansing process. Moses is wise to let go, walk away and return when the time is right. Seven of Cups. Now we have the Seven of Cups card. This card depicts a person reminiscing about all the past achievements they've accomplished, stirring up a warm feeling of nostalgia. In addition to this, they think about the future potential and dream of possibilities. They have in the past and will continue in the future to attach themselves to material objects and as a source of their happiness. They are now seen pondering on what the future objects they want to obtain. Taurus's approach to relationships is a similar manner, treating them as an object and rely on the other person as a source of happiness. Tauruses have a big desire for the finer things in life, which can include a house, car or job, but at the same time it can also include relationships, reaching higher levels of spirituality and getting close to nature. They seek out these things and consume them as a means to feel good, instead of being the source of their own happiness, and then spreading that happiness to others. Yes, Tauruses are typically, typically fun and cheerful to be around, yet underneath it all, it is really them acting out a selfish desire for everyone to get along so they feel comfortable creating an environment with no contingency. In social situations, they must learn to centre themselves. Being centred means we are anchored in both spirit, mind, logic and emotion, physical reality and the ethereal world. Being centred describes being imbalanced between those two seemingly disparate disparate parts of ourselves. When we are centred, we regain control over behaviour and become more in tune with our thoughts. It is important to realise that you cannot control other people or circumstances around you. You are only able to control how you react to things that happen to you. You do not need outsources to be happy. Realise true joy comes from within. We are about to connect with this inner joy once we become centred. Seven of Swords Depicted in the Seven of Swords, the man who is escaping or stealing a handful of swords from a desert camp. These swords represent the man's thoughts and ideas. The man's right hand is wrapped around two swords, just as someone would grip an ink pen. The symbolism here suggests the man is acting wisely and writing his ideas down on paper. By writing his ideas down, he's able to organise his thoughts and set his goals accordingly, thus providing him with the medium to escape out of the comfort zone and daily routine. As he brainstorms, he will attract inspiration, igniting a desire to achieve more from his life. Writing down one's thoughts is first step to putting his ideas into action. A Taurus may find themselves stuck in the comfort zone, having allowed fear to, deep, to keep them holding tightly to old ways of being and thinking. Seven of Pentacles. Next is the Seven of Pentacles card that depicts the man the same man seen in the Seven of Swords, but now portrayed as having lost that thing he had built, 
or had forged his idea from. You will soon notice that how the Seven of Pentacles card he's depicted now without wearing his red shoes, which he was previously wearing in the Seven of Swords card. This is significant because here the color red represents drive and passion, where which the specific attributes lead him towards achieving his goal. Although seen now in the Seven of Pentacles card, the man is wearing earth-toned coloured shoes, symbolising that he has lost his passion and has been down, brought down to earth, so to speak. His esteem bubble has been popped and he's lost all his confidence. He is now evident this man has lost hope and is rebuilding what was lost, something he has spent plenty of time working on and striving to perfect. He now judges his work critically and is disappointed that it's lost its appeal. Pentacles represent material things that we can touch with our hands, such as a job, career, health, and also reflect upon relationships, as well as our reputations. This includes things we can show off and or boast about. At this man's feet is a single, singled out pentacle, representing a single thought, idea, or that can help it get him all back. He has recently lost the success he once had, but is blessed with the inspiration of how to achieve it again. Taurus is very resourceful and will always find ways to achieve success, but it can be difficult to let go and move on to new projects, jobs or even relationships. Taurus builds a strong emotional bond with whatever they venture into. The new year is not to give up on original ideas and start over from scratch, giving it a second crack at it, albeit the, this time around with the intentions of rebuilding and improving upon that same original idea. Each, and ensure this time around your project or relationship will last as well as develop into something more substantial, maintaining and enduring for the long term. In the beginning, it is easy to get carried away with an idea. We get so riveted with the creative process that we never consider any of the consequences, ensuing rushed planning and attributes to mistakes. However, don't allow this to shatter any faith you had in your brilliant idea. It is what was intended a brilliant idea, despite being executed poorly. Give it a second chance and this time approach it more logically, as opposed to wholeheartedly. The Chariot. Pressing its head with the Chariot card, the knight in the Chariot has applied all that it's learned along its life's journey into achieving great success and being able to conquer the material world. He adorns a square on his chest plate, representing his mastery over the world. The square is an ancient symbol for the world in, it, and he circles the square spiritually with esoteric wisdom and by practicing the practical Kabbalah. This knight decorates himself with many esoteric and astrological symbols, displaying both his esoteric understanding as well as his devotion to a certain creed or organization. He flaunts an eight-pointed star on his above crown, which represents his high level of intelligence, the number eight being associated with the Sephira Hod, meaning brilliance of the mind. By utilising his brilliance, he has been able to overcome challenges by adapting his analytical problem-solving skills toward creating a life for himself that is both secure and stable. You will notice that there are two sphinxes pulling the knight's chariot. The sphinxes represent the other people chosen or convinced by him to help in the endeavour of a greater goal or life purpose, as they share similar like-minded philosophies and work towards an ultimate agenda. Correspondingly, the Hebrew letter assigned to the chariot card is Chet, meaning fence. Its spiritual, relates, its spiritual meaning relates to things that we keep fenced in, such as occult or esoteric wisdom, and can also relate to the secret agendas one has in spreading such sacred knowledge. Secret societies may choose to withhold such knowledge, knowing that sharing things tend to push others away rather than spark their interest. The chariot card is covered with many esoteric symbols. For instance, the knight adorns its crescent moons that rest upon each, each of his shoulders representing the desire to merit spiritual truths and insight from the Shekinah, the divine presence of God. He displays several alchemaic symbols on his apron. He proudly wears an eight-pointed star on his crown, connecting Mercury, also known as Hermes, flaunting his esoteric understanding and the hermetic occult mysteries and occult and spiritual sciences. With further observation, you will notice they are exactly there are exactly 40 six-pointed stars on the tapestry which hangs over the top of the chariot.
These 40 stars represent the soul's growth and maturity needed to understand and conceal the mystical wisdom of the Kabbalah. Furthermore, he wields a long staff with a candle at each end of the right hand, which is a tool used for connecting to the higher self and to the light of the Creator. Presented on the front of the chariot is a shield which is dreidled with wings painted on it. Has a dreidel with wings painted on it. Dreidels are known to spin for so long. They are merely a temporary enjoyment. Nonetheless, the wings are able to carry the spinning dreidel forever. In so much, the dreidel would never touch the ground and the remain spinning forever. The idea is to have the dreidel become like the sun disk that is placed in between these wings, which represented forever constant and reliable. In order for the dreidel to do this, one must continue spinning it. They must, con constant, they must keep constant attention and focus the certain thing which offers them enjoyment, which the dreidel symbols, symbolizes to them, thus giving that certain something wings. The knight fears that he could lose the things that he's worked so hard for. He remains focused, maintaining his success, so it will continue to last forever. He believes that success is achieved when he's at his physical best, as well as spiritual. It is important for him to stay connected to his higher self, the source of his inspiration for creation. Once he acquires a taste for success, he will then gain the sense of certainty needed in order for him to continue and maintain his success. He understands that he must continue striving to become better, improving upon what he already knows and to dig deeper for those purpose of enriching his understanding of life and human nature with regards to both the material and spiritual realities that exist simultaneously. It is one's connection to the source that empowers life force within, therefore making it possible to achieve the impossible and for one to obtain the certainty that they contain the power to ascend mind over matter. The Tower. From here we progress to the final card in Taurus's path, the Tower. Depicted, depicted here is the lower depicted here is the tower having been struck by lightning, causing a man and woman to fall out of the tower onto the rocks below. The tower represents a particular goal or concept they've been working on, having built it up from scratch over a long period of time, manifesting it from the original idea to its reality. The tower can represent a wide range of things, including, but not limited to, a business concept, relationship goals, as well as obtaining a higher level of enlightenment, reached only after years of devout spiritual study and ego transformation. Our human spirit is like a tower, and when we develop and build it up as well, by practicing meditation and working on ourselves, we are able to raise kundalini, life force energy within our vessel. This force ascends up from the base of our spinal column to our skull as we experience the sensation of enlightenment into the crown chakra. Upon achieving the spark of enlightenment, one is able to tap into a new higher realm of spiritual insight and understanding. Obtaining a broader sense of spiritual awareness with this new awareness becomes the new big picture, realizations and self-reflection. We are then able to realize our wrongdoings and unruly behaviors. From here, we gain wisdom and rise above our limiting beliefs and shatter our previous fixed mindset. At this point, we experience the aha moment and connect to higher truths. Both the man and woman in this card have experienced a distinct and personalized spiritual awakening, which destroys their tower and ultimately shatters their belief systems. They are now forced to pick up the pieces and start over. Although they will rise from the ashes stronger and more spiritually mature than ever before, People tend to believe that material wealth and material objects will bring them happiness. Looking for outside sources blinds one to such truths and that such happiness is found from within. Subsequently, the search for inner truth can bind a person as well, because the closer one gets to obtaining such truths, the more so their minds become unwilling to change. Strictly speaking, a person can succumb to a certain agenda and find themselves omitting anything that disagrees with their agenda's reasoning, immediately blocking out or diminishing all outside perspectives. Over time, we come to realize that money and fame, along with material possessions, such a house, a car, a business, are all temporary things. For this reason, how others perceive our character trumps the way we are judged by either our looks or what we own. 
The truly important things in life are the relationships we have with ourselves, our family and our friends. When we open up our hearts and let go of ego, we are able to connect to the people we love on a deeper emotional level, correspondingly sharing our light with others. The light can be felt with the light can be felt be what they remember, so f more than the fancy gifts you gave them. It's more about how you make others feel, which truly leaves an impact. The light you have shared, the good things you have done in the world to make it a better place will last even after you are gone. The personal connections are what truly matters and what we can take with us into the next life. Our relationship with ourself and God or higher self is eternal. An enlightened Taurus learns to, the value, learns to value their connection with the light more so than an infatuation with material objects. The light enters our vessel and raises our vibration, elevating our soul and conscious awareness. This enlightened sense of awareness wakes us up to the fact that life is not about acquiring material things, just to quench the need for instant gratification or to obtain a fading sense of accomplishment. In the long run, have, having more stuff doesn't matter. It's the impact, the mark that you make that leaves truly for the world to, for the better and sets an example for others to follow in your footsteps. Although this card may has many positive traits, it can also be perceived as in a negative polarity, whereas the man and the woman can be seen as selfishly following their ego-driven desire to obtain a light enlightenment, as if it were an achievement comparable to achieving a black belt in karate, for example. They do not understand that to be spiritually enlightened is to maintain a sense of being enlightened, and it's something you grow to become, not something you attain overnight. It takes time and a conscious effort to be able to truly grasp the higher truths in their divine simplicity. Once you see the truth, you can never go back. You can never unsee it. This new shift in awareness is your new woke mindset and becomes your essence. Allow me to explain. The man and the woman in the tower card did the spiritual work required for them to ascend up the 22 branches of the tree of life, represented here by the 22 yods that float in the air. It was at the top of the tower where they connected to the source, the crown chakra, also known as the Sephira Keta, meaning crown. But with the acquired spiritual knowledge, they had built themselves into a spiritual tower of Babel, so to speak. They had treated the achievement of enlightenment just as they would a material object or an award that they were wishing to win. Upon reaching enlightenment, their ego stepped in and deceived them into believing that they had done it on their own accord, either with such a great tenacity or by having such a great high level of confidence in themselves. At this point, they stopped relying on the light for guidance. They built their tower up to heaven so that they could be just as high as God. And then once this higher level was achieved, they vainly felt as if their gods, they were gods themselves. Their situation is oddly similar to the old concept. If you give a man to fish, he will not go hungry for that day. But if you teach a man to fish, he will never go hungry again. These people used to be spiritually hungry and they were taught to fish. And now they feel like they no longer need to be need the teacher and they feel like they can continue fishing without any godly help although eventually with time they will come to find that they will need to fish just to survive this world they will soon be faced with new challenges that life will throw at them today it's fish tomorrow it's shelter nothing lasts forever we all experience times of good followed by times of bad and these challenges will seem overwhelming to them now that they have lost their connection to the higher self and must go at it alone. Without their connection to the crown at the top of the tower, doubts, fear and anxiety will ensue. When we open up our hearts to the source, the light of the creator, will he invite the life force in, which boosts our tower kundalini energy once again. Similar to the old adage, the teacher represent, presents himself when the student is ready. God was always there and always just needed to tap into the source energy, the infinite energy, which is all around us, all of the time. Once we understand that this is the source and not our ego is when we begin to build up our spiritual tower within. The characters in the card will eventually realize that the truth is merely a vessel and the channel for the light. 
that becoming spiritual isn't about beginning a new personality or getting a new vocabulary or wardrobe, buying crystals or doing yoga. It's about returning to our natural state. Reaching enlightenment is about preserving a higher sense of awareness so that you can continue realizing new truths and break free from limiting beliefs and a fixed mindset. Once we shatter our beliefs, we must wipe the slate clean and start over. However, don't be afraid to start over again. This time, you are not starting from scratch. You're starting from experience. Resist the urge to stay within the realm of comfort and predictability. The energy of Taurus must prompt us to shy away from new ideas, opportunities or people. But this is precisely the time to embrace change and discomfort in order to spark radical transformation. Interesting to note that there is a Hebrew letter assigned to the tower card Pei, meaning mouth. The intriguing thing about the letter Pei is that there is a hidden letter Bet inside of it. Bet means house and can relate here specifically to things that we say in private, in our homes or away from the public. This corresponds to one's spiritual growth and transformation worked on in private and it is advised not to speak openly or share with others how you are developing spiritually and avoid bragging about your personal milestones achieved. For instance, when we decide to speak about our spiritual work, we are in reality consciously or subconsciously seeking out the approval of others. In this exchange, their approval validates our growth, which consequently exhausts our self-esteem. It is as if it is the only reason we are working on ourselves is for others to praise us for being a good person. Winning others' approval is like winning a gold star in a grade school or a trophy at the end of a contest. It is with each new person we you meet, they become like a new merit badge you must earn and collect on your sash. Earning others' approval can transform into an addiction and never be truly fulfilling. It can be... It can come to be exhausting, participating in a rat race where the award for first place is a pat on the back, and you find yourself doing this with every person you meet, trying to impress them. This approval once received from others has a way of diminishing our spiritual towers as we attempt to raise our spiritual vibration and ascend up through the, each of the chakras. Holding in this life force energy gives one to power to build and ascend up their tower, Likewise, releasing the energy reactively will just as quickly compromise what they have spent so much time and effort in building up. Sacred things we keep and speak of in private have a tendency of up coming out publicly if we do not maintain a stable control over our spiritual towers. When we share what is regarded to be private, done with either sarcastic remarks, emotional outburst, or spreading gossip, it has the power to destroy anything that we've spent time building. This includes our relationships, friendships, careers, as well as our reputations. It can take years to build a strong friendship, and only in an instant, with the wrong words spoken, that friendship can be destroyed forever. A Taurus must continue to be mindfully aware of the caliber of their spiritual tower, while at the same time remaining mindful that their thoughts on the grounds of those thoughts have the power to diminish one's spirit, clouding one's judgment and sense of discernment. The higher the, the calibers of one's tower, the easier it is for them to lose control over their emotions and act out impulsively. With this power comes great responsibility. You see, our thoughts become words and our words have the power to either build up or destroy the things that we care about most. Behaving reactively releases our light, permitting ego to enter. With the greater amount of the light that escapes our vessel, there is a potential for greater amount of ego to enter. This is why it is so important to be mindful of when our spirit feels at its strongest, because it is when we have the greatest potential to cause the most havoc, both to ourselves and those we love. Having a strong willpower is key to maintaining a stable spiritual tower, granting us with the stability in our relationships, friendships and careers. When you decide to change, do it for not the approval of others. Self-control is strength. Calmness is mastery. You have to get to a point where your mood doesn't shift based on your insignificant actions of someone else. Don't allow others to control the direction of your life. Don't allow your emotions to overpower your intelligence. Morgan Freeman Now, time to break out of your shell. Say no to complacency and yes to change. And only do so for yourself, for your own peace of mind. Your value does not decrease based on someone's inability to see your truth. 
As you meditate on these cards, say to yourself, I clearly see my personal intentions. I personally see my personal, re my personal limitations. Looking into the past, I noticed all of the instances where ego has helped me, kept me imprisoned, holding me back from the joy, the true joy and fulfillment. As I focus on the light of the creator, the transformative energy of the divine washes over me and I feel free. No more, contem no more complaining, no more frustration. I will not get caught up in the material world. Instead, I will look beyond into the spiritual realm and let go, freeing myself freeing myself from the trappings of ego. That concludes uh, the, the section on Taurus, the Tarot Decoded, Raziel's Interpretation, New Extended Edition by Grant Isaac. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already with the all notification bell. That way you will see what video I upload next and also the next chapter of this Audible series. If you'd like a personal tarot reading with me, please visit my website, newangeltarot.com, or if you'd like to learn more about tarot from the Rider Waite system, also visit my website, newangeltarot.com forward slash academy. I also hold seasonal Zooms from time to time. Thank you for listening, and until next time, I'll see you soon.